Is there anything good in the shop this week, or is it just crates? Well, we'll have a look at that, and we start off right at the top with... Yeah, crates. I kind of find it funny that they call this bonus. The only bonus that anybody's getting is Wargaming here, so... These are crate bundles, and some of these do include 14 days of premium and 4,000 gold, so... They could be worth it, but obviously the crates don't add any value, except maybe three common boosters in most cases. And then we have the TSL 7 Defender container. Why is it in the container again? Nobody knows, but don't worry, you're not missing out on anything by not buying crates. You're also not missing out on anything by not buying the Object 252 you draw right here. Obviously, you can play the first... Uh, one or two, because that's ten times five, which is quite useful. But after that, it starts to become very bad value, because you end up with stuff like sandboxes, which is the most useless thing that Wargaming has ever invented, besides spare parts. Or you could end up with an avatar, which is even worth less than that. So, again, object 2 have to you. Still a decent tank, but it is not worth it in a draw, especially because there is a vehicle that is worth more later. We're gonna go through that. Containers, containers, blah, 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 blah. You don't want those. Then the individual offers are, uh, well, individual, and it's, again, almost free resources. Almost free is not a thing. It's either free or it's not free. 250, though, for 15 times 5 and 7 days is pretty solid. So if you're trying to go on a grinding spree and, for example, obtain two new tier 10s or whatever, then this could be very useful because with 15 times 5 you can pretty much get through a tier rate in, in its entirety. The resources here, all of these, it's very expensive. It's just black boxes, and it's just the same as the regular gold bundle, but again, here are the times five. So these are the kind of things. Look at what you need. Are you trying to grind new tech trays? Are you bored of having to play stock vehicles? That's what it's for. But otherwise, if you don't need the stuff, why the hell would you buy it? Same with the Object 260, which I will be playing later, so more on that vehicle later. But I mean, 20,000 here for the full bundle, not too bad, the times 5 unfortunately are locked to the vehicle, which is very terrible. And then um, we have a Matilda BP draw. So uh, I don't think I have to tell you that that's a dumb idea. I mean, it's not very expensive, of course, but it's a Matilda BP. You can't even sell it for gold because it's still the premium. I don't understand it either. Then, the Panther M10. This is one of those vehicles where you pay to lose, basically. An 8.5k for two tier 7s. It's a decent price, I guess. I mean, it should be lower. But neither the M6 nor the Panther M10 are in any way interesting nor rewarding, mostly. And especially, you're buying a tier 7, so you get less credits, less damage than a tier 8. So they would have to be something special. And these two vehicles are the exact opposite of special. So... Then we have the STLVK here as well, which is better than the Object 260. And uh, again, if you have the Concept 1B, if you have the T125, if you really like that kind of play style of vehicle, this can be a useful addition as well. However, if you already have a Concept 1B, you don't need that. Steel Monsters, great bundle. This was one I can definitely recommend. Obviously, if you already have a K2 and an STLV81, for free, you don't really need any more premium tanks besides that, or collector tanks. I mean, the Type is a great tank. The Tornwagen is a great tank for what they are. If you're into heavy tanks, if you want to grind creds, this is a great bundle. We already talked about that last week as well. Yeah, again, this is just a... If you're trying to collect tanks and you just want to waste money, it's just not worth it. And the Iron Predators are a absolutely hilarious joke, because you're paying 13.5 for something that's worth about 9. And then down here, open your free containers, because they are free. They're not almost free, they're actually free. And, uh, yeah, ignore the rest, because why would you buy crates? You're always going to lose. No matter how much you're trying to win, you will always lose. No matter how many tanks you get out of crates, no matter how great you feel about what you're getting out of crates, you will always lose. All right, here we go with the Object 260, and I hope it's going to be a good game, because i got to leave in like an hour. But this vehicle has over 3,000 DPM, 400 alpha damage, 0.32 accuracy, only 6 degrees of gun depression, which is terrible, but usual for Soviet vehicles. The being terrible as well, at least in real life. And the power weight ratio of this thing is quite solid. I mean, the effective one is like 14, so it is a bit above your regular heavy tank, but still nothing too extraordinary. You can get to this kind of speed in a Chieftain or a lot of other heavies as well, but this vehicle's armor 
is not really there. You can't side scrape because of the side plate here. And the turret can be penned by a lot of guns as well, right here next to the gun mantlet. So the armor on this vehicle is very questionable and not useful. So it is very much a second tier, uh, tier 10 collector vehicle. One that you should only pick up if you want to collect all the tier 10 collectors. Or um, not if you want to make credits or something or play well. This is not the tank for that. Um, but generally, it is not a vehicle I recommend it. The price of it is solid, I guess. You can purchase it, but obviously, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm just going to play this very carefully. I'm very happy that one of the 183s is already dead, so I can stop bothering with that. Two 183s should never happen in any battle, anywhere, at any time. And I would uh, pretty much hope that Wargaming eventually fixes that. There can only be one 183 per game or per team rather so be careful though because he could still be up there he could also be back there don't want to really get shot you can hash the lower play of this vehicle so there's that okay well that's a win despite that progetto <laughs> hey, here's the thing about this game i'm playing blitz for 10 years and things have never changed right the teams are terrible the gameplay makes no sense and whatever you do, whatever you think you know, you'll always be disappointed in the end anyway. So, let's see what we can do. And it is never gonna get better. Don't worry about that. Let's see, there's the T-22 still up on the hill. Gotta watch out for that. I don't know why the E-5 is just sitting out in the open. Something, obviously, you shouldn't do if you want to be a good player. Sit out in the open in front of the enemy team while doing absolutely nothing. That is always a, a great way of... Losing. Okay. Just uh, feel like a tank destroyer here. I'm just sniping these people. Put another one. Nope, that's not gonna. Okay. He turned just enough for it to pen. Because if he wouldn't have turned, it would have bounced. Again, the E5 has no awareness whatsoever. He knows that I'm up on the hill, but he peaks the hill position anyway. So um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this game anymore. Like the tank, it's not great. But with these kind of teams, with the gameplay quality that Blitz has these days, there is nothing you need to fear. Because as long as you have a little bit of a brain, you're gonna do really great. And you don't even need to bring your gun. You can just ram them. So yeah, that's uh... Don't buy this tank. Just, just don't. I know this was a really good battle in it and whatever, but just don't, don't buy this tank. Just, just don't. I got a sniper medal in a heavy. That's how great this battle was. Right, let's go with the STOVK. 3.3k DPM. 350 alpha damage. This is sort of the Carnarvon Action X of tier 10. Um, you know, low alpha damage. Not really that great armor. Solid enough mobility. I mean, it's about the same mobility as the Object 260 here. So you're not really having any difference. Obviously, less alpha damage. A lot better gun in terms of the aim time and also the gun depression. Uh, than the 260 so if you buy the 260 or this one i would recommend the stvk over the 60 any day of the month so i see the entire enemy team is in the city which is lovely for me again read the battle if you play like everyone else you're gonna do like everyone else and given the average player is not very good you'll do not very good so don't play like everyone else okay learn your own style okay it's obviously very annoying, and you don't want to peak fight this guy. I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm stupid. But, um... Uh, also because I'm more... Well, let's put it this way. I'm more confident in the Object 263's inability to harm me than my ability to harm him. So... Let's see. Obviously, the 350 is uh, the biggest downside of this vehicle, and I only really recommend it to experienced players. Um, how do you know you're an experienced player? Look at the stats of the tank. And if you look at the stats, you already should know how to play it, roughly. And if you look at the stats of the vehicle, you're like, huh? Then you're not good enough to buy the STLVK. Basically, that's how I would put that together. And uh, it's obviously something very important to learn to read the stats. It's obviously a bit weird coming from me, since I mostly ignore the stats and just play every tank by the feels. Uh, if you've been playing for 10 years, you know how a tank's going to play, even if you don't know what the exact accuracy number is. So, but generally, it is, at first, very useful 
start learning and understanding the stats, what they mean, what a different stat does do the um, gameplay of a vehicle, and eventually you're just gonna know it by the feels. So, which is why I can just fight this guy, despite I, me knowing he has a lot higher DPM and a lot higher alpha damage. Again, I trust in his inability to be able to harm me. I'm gonna be able to push forward here. I mean, he can be in the bush. He's gonna shoot me. It's gonna be fine. I might have enough hit points to cope with that. I also know that the console won't be is over there. He can't shoot at me. So the only tech that really can attack me right now is the object. And I have enough hit points to approach the object without suffering any consequences. I need two shots for him. He needs three for me. His reload's a little bit longer than mine. So I'll be fine either way. For some reason, that tank destroyer has... There he is. All right. So basically, it is a solid vehicle. Am I going to recommend it to everybody? Of course not. Am I going to recommend it to good players that are looking for a challenge? Basically, if the Concept 1B is too easy for you, get this one. Um, if you want to escape the 5A, basically. So, just going to... Again. Yeah, that's the STVK, basically. Only buy it if you're a good player. And you know that you're a good player if you know how the tank plays before you've ever played it. Basically. That's how I would put it down. Anyway, that said, that's a shop review. I gotta go. See ya!